this is like a HQ where the cameras are made, where the lenses are made. And also, this is Lights Park. So they finished it up this past year. There is a hotel, a new Leica shop, a museum. These two buildings are where they build cinema lenses and watches, makes sense, right? And don't worry, we will be talking about Leica's brand new camera, the SL2. I have it in my hands, it's here. <laughs> um, but welcome to a video. My name is Sarah Dici, rhymes with Peachy if you're new around here. Recently, I made a video about my grandpa handing down all of his old Leica film cameras to me. And so it's been a journey for me recently, discovering the heritage of Leica, the history, um, but also the cameras that they're focused on now. This is in Wetzlar, Germany, where Leica brought us to show off their brand new SL2, their second generation full frame mirrorless camera with a 47.3 megapixel sensor. So many megapixels, full frame, I love it. Here is one example of a picture that I took with it of my friend Joe. I think these are great examples of what Leica is known for. They have great glass that is basically tack sharp, wide open. The background is beautiful and blurry and oh my gosh, look how sharp he is. Look how sharp his camera is. Yeah, this camera is a beast. The images will be DNG and JPEG. The DNG will be 8,368 pixels by 5,584. So again, you got a lot of room to work with. It has a five axis body image stabilization. So that means it doesn't matter if your lenses have IS, you will be covered. Dual SD card slots, a new OLED viewfinder, which is so crystal clear, 14 stops of dynamic range, a separate headphone and mic jack. And one of my favorite features a redesigned menu that it basically just splits it up into photo and video. That's it. Super simple to use, super simple menu to navigate. Yes, you think Leica, you think photo, but wow, does this pack powerful video specs. You can record up to 5K at 30 frames per second. This camera shines when you can switch it over to MOV mode, which of course will be higher quality, but much higher file sizes than the MP4 mode. We've seen these specs before, but usually it's limited to an external monitor via HDMI. So the fact that we can record this directly to an SD card is phenomenal. However, you're gonna have to have a special one. The only one that worked was the Sony Tough series for me. It's their new UHS-2 SD cards and it worked great. But any SD card below that 300 read write speed will fail miserably. Also, you have up to 180 frames per second slow-mo in 1080. And then of course you have MP4, you can shoot 4K at 24 frames per second, 100 megabits per second. So you're just gonna be seeing a smaller file size, a little bit, you know, lesser quality in the MP4, but you do have that mode to go in if you have a slower SD card or you just don't wanna take up the space, you know? You have the video gamma options of HLG and L-Log, which is great. Uh, I started in the standard mode, but holy smokes, it is so contrasty. So so punchy. I love that look, but standard is too much. So I shot most of my stuff in natural mode and that was a great balance and it looked beautiful. Some of the footage shot out in Germany was shot in L-Log, which is very easy to color grade. I was getting some nice colors. A beefy camera but I'm actually most surprised by the autofocus the continual autofocus in video mode but also the image stabilization it's really nice look at this image stabilization it's pretty good right it's really good oh. content well the bells I started filming with the bells well look how beautiful it's fall in Germany so now I have the 16 to 35 on here. The 24 to 90, apparently the lens had image stabilization as well as the body image stabilization. But the six, can you even hear me? Can, I, I don't know. 
but the 16 to 35 doesn't have image stabilization, but it's wider. So how does it look? Again, my arm hurts a little bit. shooting in natural a lot. Here's an example of me interviewing Joe Greer, an amazing photographer that you'll see in the part two video of this video, but this was just in natural 4K, 24 frames per second with the 24 to 90 lens. It looks so good. A feature on this camera, which is fantastic for zoom lenses that do not have the constant aperture, is something called floating ISO. So when I was recording this interview, I was able to zoom in without having to worry that the aperture is gonna go from 2.8 to four when I go from 24 to 90. So basically this floating ISO will compensate for the less amount of light that is going into your lens at 90 and it'll bump up the ISO. And so you'll have a consistent image throughout when you zoom in. Like I said in the beginning, Leica lenses are so sharp wide open. It was a joy to shoot with this. These pics are straight out of the camera. I didn't edit much at all. I adjust some of the exposures maybe bump the saturation a little bit in some of them but pretty much straight from the camera If you enjoyed this hands-on first impressions video of the new Leica SL2, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe because I will have a part two of this video. I just film so much. I'm, I'm gonna get it finished when I can, maybe in a month or so. So you gotta make sure to stick around for that video. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Okay guys, stay peachy. Okay, bye. Thank you so much. It's very quiet in here. Shh. Imagine walking into like a New York camera shop and them asking, would you like an espresso? So I basically only have two days here. So it's a lot of content to get in a short amount of time. Therefore, lots of coffee with lots of sugar. I could live in this camera shop.